Popstar Maker is a pop group management simulation game that was exclusively released in PAL regions in November of 2001. This was the title for the English version released in the UK that possibly had a wider European release, but in France it was called 100% Star, and in Germany it was called Newcomer Be a Popstar. Why it happened this way, I really can't say. The usual assumption with this kind of thing is that there are existing licenses in each respective country that demand the name changes. Also, you might be wondering why this is the next game in the complete PlayStation series when it begins with a letter P. Well, I screwed up and got the regions wrong. At first I thought that 100% Star was the original title of the game, and I was wrong. Listen, this is very important, and I have made a grave mistake that will affect millions. Moving on. Have you got what it takes to become the ultimate pop star maker? <laughs> Get a load of this. Look at the charts today, inundated with manufactured bands. The music business is in need of some fresh talent. Are you the person to make the next super band that will take the world by storm? <laughs> The game where you manufacture a band is selling itself to you by criticizing manufactured bands and saying that there are too many of them already. I mean, I agree with what they're saying, but they aren't helping themselves. And what's up with bootleg Harley Quinn from Batman the Animated Series? Anyways, I was surprised to see that this game was published by Eidos Interactive, who, you know, have published just a few things here and there. Popstar Maker was developed by Tech Software Development Limited, which was a company that mostly ported games to the likes of Commodore 64 and Amiga, Atari ST, and Amstrad CPC, amongst other hardware. Perhaps most notably, they did ports of Ninja Gaiden, retitled as Shadow Warriors, which is how it was known in PAL regions at the time. Admittedly, this company threw a few curveballs at me when trying to research them. Their line of software varies greatly from source to source, as well as their lifespan. But look, I'm just going to relay what I've gathered from my research, and if you find a source that tells the story differently, please remember that I likely found that as well, and had to pit it against existing, conflicting information to ultimately make a decision. That being said, please do share any findings you have with me, as there is always the chance that I left some stone unturned, and I'm always open to learn more. From what I understand, Tech Software was formed in 1987 in Rotherham, England, and as I've mentioned, they focused predominantly on programming arcade and console conversions for 8 and 16-bit home computers. In 1988, they created an entity to publish their original works titled Chrysalis Software Limited, which would later have the spelling changed due to a dispute with Chrysalis Records. They also worked with their sister company, Tech London, on sound development support for a few games here and there. This was all done with a proprietary sound engine created by Sean Hollingworth, a game designer and founding member of the company. The engine was operated by video game musician Matt Furness, who would go on to use it extensively on a wide variety of Sega games such as Joe and Mac, The Lion King, and The Lost Vikings, amongst many, many others. Matt was nice enough to answer a few questions for me while creating this episode, so thanks Matt. If you get a chance, go through his impressive list of works, which I'll link in the description. You'll be surprised to see just how talented one person can possibly be. In 1991, Tech Software split off from Tech London, causing them to change the name of their company to the title they had been using to publish their own games since the beginning, Chrysalis Software. Over the next decade, they operated sound on a large number of Sega Mega Drive slash Genesis games, and they developed and published many titles for a myriad of consoles and computers, with the majority of them being for the Acorn Archimedes. And it's here that we finally arrive at the PlayStation game Popstar Maker, released on November 23rd of 2001. Upon review, there are two very odd things about this. One, rather than using their current at the time name, Chrysalis, it's tech software that's credited as the developer of the game on the case. Why did they do that? Two, the company ceased operations seven days after the release of this game, and both of the names of Tech and Chrysalis would be dissolved three and four years later, respectively. So, what? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, you can theorize whatever you want about those things, but these are all the facts we have. Okay, let's make some plop stars. Um, yay. <clears throat> this is the menu, everyone. Take it all in. Breathe in heavily. 
These are the settings. All of them. Select your territory. The options are Europe, America, Asia, Australia, and New Jersey. At the My Pop Group page, it's time to recruit some new performers. Scrolling through them, you can see they all have varying stats like vocals and dancing and whatnot. <laughs> I'm immediately intrigued by this guy's desert camo romper and Velcro sandals. So that's what we'll be going with for three of our members. And then for the other two, we kidnapped the lead singer from New Radicals and cloned him. Next, we name our band with a totally not frustrating single horizontal line of text that we have to scroll back and forth on while totally not annoying sounds are being made every time we do anything. Speaking of sounds, I find it so strange that there isn't any music being played on the menu screens in this game that is apparently about music. It's eerie and isolating. And just all around a strange decision. Like, original music could have been made for this using the in-game music editor, which you'll see in a bit. Why wasn't any of that used here? It's all just silence and menu boops. Introducing the next big musical act of the millennium, Walmart. Okay, so get used to looking at this because this is basically the whole game here. You can see at the top, there's a calendar date, which is what this game is centered around. Starting in the top left corner, we have my diary, which is where I keep all of my secrets and talk about who I have a crush on. Actually, it's just how you manage your calendar and fill in which activity you'll do each day. You can schedule a studio recording, and if you've already done so, you can release a single or an entire album if you've recorded enough tracks. There's also training, which will obviously raise each member's stats, and live performance, which you have to carefully budget the marketing and ticket prices for. There are three different venues in each territory that vary in audience capacity and upfront costs. You can choose from like five or six set designs, and I'm gonna go ahead and be honest with you all right now. There ain't a whole lot of Liddeller to find there. I understand that that is a very subjective thing, but <laughs> it is of my opinion that there isn't really anything to write home about here. You'll see soon enough. All of this is where most of the strategy lies in the game, as you have to be careful to properly grow the band's popularity without going bankrupt in the process. Move over to charts on the right here and you can see what singles and albums have made it to the top 10 this week. This actually ended up being my second favorite part of the experience, as I enjoyed just seeing what names they came up with. Come Over and See Me by Country Dave. River Wet, Mountain Dry by Park Patrol. Brother vs. Sister by Bad Boy Bubby. Saucer Full of Serious Teen Troopers. Parp, Sugar and Spice. Playing with my heart, the mullets. You can check your email inbox here, which occasionally might include a record contract offer, like this one from Relentless Records. Based on the signing fee and royalty rate, you can decide to either accept the offer or reject it. This is somewhat of a gamble, as accepting the offer would close you off from future, potentially better offers, unless you're willing to pay a fee and break the contract. The My Pop Group tab lets you hire and fire members of the group, as well as change their attire. According to the One Game Facts on this, this is important to do at least once a week or so in order to maintain the happiness of your performers. That's cool and all, but I demand 24-7 camo rompers, velcro sandals, and bucket hats. Thank you. In the My Money tab, you can look at your current funds, expenditures, and profits. I believe you always start the game with 50,000 pounds, which is a little over 68,000 US dollars. In game options, you can choose what type of travel and accommodations your group will receive, whether it be budget, standard, or luxury. This has an effect on each member's mood, with the nicer options making them happier, but it would obviously cost a lot more. In the Awards tab, you can view silhouettes of what look like trophies, and this will never change. So to move time forward, you press start and advance by one day. For day one, I've scheduled a studio recording, and this can be handled in several different ways. You can write your own song in the music editor, which I'll get to in a second, or you can purchase the rights to cover an existing song. Doing the first one is free, but time consuming, and doing the second one can be expensive but fast. I chose to do both by writing one song and purchasing two. I bought Love Me Up Too Far by Ray Deante and Fat Love. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Fat Love by David Love. <laughs> I snorted. You then spend money to record the tracks, and you can choose which of these will be your next single. If you've recorded the minimum requirement, I think it was somewhere around eight songs, you can put together a full album. Let's take a quick look at the in-game music editor, which is my favorite part of the game. It's janky, it's counterintuitive, it's tedious, but it's still kind of fun. You have a single line for each instrument and numbered samples to punch into each beat. I find it strange that the numbers are all seemingly random. 
It looks like whoever programmed this created samples that they organized by number, but only certain ones made it into the final game. And rather than renaming these to something that might make sense to the player, we get this odd assortment of numbers for each instrument. In this way, it really does feel thrown together. I even found a misplaced drum sample in the bass section. My other major complaint with this is that most of the samples abruptly break at the tail end. So if you wanted to create one long sustained note with either the strings or the synth, it ends up sounding like this. Also, in order to play back your work so far, you have to slowly scroll all the way to the beginning of the sequence, which would be annoying on its own, but it's made infinitely worse when these are the sounds you have to hear while doing that. Negatives aside, I swear this was still really fun. The vocal samples are hilarious, oh, baby. and the overall club pop vibe will transport you back to that weird early 2000s era. I actually found myself getting lost in the experience. A lot like dumping my bin of Legos out as a kid and losing myself to hours of custom creations. Do you guys want to hear Walmart's major hit? I present to you, Always Low Prices. Hey DJ. Ugh, he's not doing it right. I'll take care of this. Wait, no, he's sensitive. Shut up. Um, Jamie, so Doc says you're not doing it right. What? I didn't say that. I don't get why they can't just nail this one simple part. Yeah, but honestly, he does sound like crap. Oh my god, I know. I can still hear you guys talking about me. Yeah, well, I'm still pressing the button, so, duh. Please, stop arguing, everyone. Hey, listen to Doc, everybody. Yeah, sure, he's incredibly annoying. And maybe he's the weakest link out of the five of yous, but he's right. Listen, kids, I need you all to get along, okay? If you could put aside your differences, we could record a hit record today. I wouldn't steer you wrong. They don't call me Mr. Platinum for nothing. Move forward another day, and we have training on the schedule. Unfortunately, this is, uh, <laughs> it's pretty uneventful. You basically just select which attributes you want each character to improve upon, and you do that by spending money. That's it. We get no animations or mini games or anything. You can see that every performer has red sections on their stat bars, which indicate the maximum potential growth for that stat. Some of the characters are well balanced, while others specialize in one thing and completely lack in another. Like Jamie here, who is the least charming person you'll ever meet. Natalie, Doc, come on, pick up the pace. Bobby, I need quicker twirls, at least 20% faster. Jack, I like what you're doing, maybe tone it down a bit. Jamie, I need you two, maybe three inches taller. Huh? All right, let's take five. Help yourself to a fresca. There's a bowl of Starburst on the table, but don't have too many. I don't need you kids bloated for the big performance. Just before your group puts on a performance, you get to see what the attendance looks like along with ticket sales. I got zero for the show. Really? Like, do none of the band members have any friends or even family? Whenever you face a turnout like this, you have the option to skip the performance entirely instead of wasting your time, but that comes at the cost of losing any potential audience attendance over time, and the venue still charges you. This all plays into the major challenge that this game presents, which is money management more than anything else. It's all about properly planning low-cost marketing and crowd building early on and scaling up as you make more and more profit. This I was not very good at, and two weeks before my group even performed, I received an email from the bank notifying me that my account was overdrawn and I had a short amount of time to fix the situation. I didn't do that. Back to the performance. You can only play the original songs you made in the music editor because I guess the developers couldn't be bothered to make any of their own songs for the game. Yeah, you heard me right. There is no fat love. There is no David love. It was all a ruse. One big fat loveless lie. Do, uh, do I look any taller to you? 
You know, now that you mention it, maybe a little bit. All right, everybody, shut up and listen. This is your first big gig. We got a lot riding on this. I got a lot riding on this. I want you to look your best, sound your best, and for God's sake, smile. I'm looking at you, Bobby. Make sure your Velcro's fastened securely. Lord knows we don't need a wardrobe malfunction out there. Curtain call, 30 seconds to show time. Knock them dead, gang. Make some noise. Make some noise. So, <laughs> this is what the performances look like. Mmm. Fantastic moves, everyone. Excellent. I could be wrong. You know, don't don't quote me on this one. But I don't think they hired an actual dance choreographer for the development of this game. Just a hunch I have. I don't know. The crowd is comprised of a vast, empty black space, which at first I believed was due to the poor audience attendance, but with later performances that actually had people show up, it was the same. Just this dark, eerie expanse of nothing. It feels like a horrible dream. Like, they couldn't have chosen anything else? Was it too difficult to put flat images here or something? Anyways, you can switch between several camera angles, so that's nice, right? Most of them are not good camera angles, like, at all. And beyond that, there's an exit option. I'm not sure if doing this has any effect on the group's fan base or not. The image of the arrow pointing out the door kind of throws me off. Like, is this a diegetic exit for the whole group? Meaning that the show ended early? Or is it just that I, the player of the game, am choosing not to watch the show, though it does go on? These are the important questions in life, everyone. Not in a broader, meaningful sense. I mean specifically about Popstar Maker, the 2001 PlayStation game. Oh yeah! Baby, baby! Aha! Oh yeah! Yeah! Aha! Yeah, baby! Ah, oh, jeez. Oh boy. Ah, crap. Wow, guys, we really did it! Well, guys, we made me do that. What the crap are you even talking about? There was no audience. Nobody showed up. Yeah, it was like we were performing for a black void. Fantastic job, kiddos. The performance went off without a hitch. And even better, Always Low Prices has climbed the charts to number 37. Unfortunately, I've defaulted on my loans and the band is defunct as of now. What? what? Look, I'd love to stick around and shoot the breeze with you all, but on the greener pastures, you know what I mean? Wait, oh waiter. Uh, hold on there, my golden child. Huh? How would you like to be a part of something bigger than Walmart? I'm talking a whole new project. I'm talking straight to success. Are you in? What? I thought you didn't even like me. Why choose me out of everyone else? <laughs> Well, it isn't really about me liking or disliking you. Heck, it isn't even about me hating you or generally despising your presence. <laughs> you see, my boy, I've got you under contract. I own your face, your voice, and your name in perpetuity. I'm bored. I know you are, kiddo. Me too. I'm still going to be the front man, right? <laughs> Uh, uh, oh yeah, definitely. So on my first playthrough, I went bankrupt and lost everything. Time for a replay. Walmart. Psh, old news, everybody. The hot new band on the streets is called Big K. You see, the problem with Walmart is that they didn't have enough Velcro sandals. And they weren't united in their camo rompers. So happy you all are here together. Welcome, welcome. Big K's gonna be huge. Schmooze a bit, get to know each other. Fresca, Starburst, you know the drill. Jamie, show everyone to their sleeping quarters. Wait, hold your horses. We have business to attend to. I would now like to take a moment to welcome Big K's lead member. And we all know whose it's gonna be. Jamie, drum roll please. Uh, oh, okay, okay, uh... Penny! Huh? Wow, 
wow, this is such a surprise. I have so many people to thank. Firstly... All right, that's beautiful. I expect to see everyone in the studio in 15. They'll grow up, and let's get a move on, people. This time around, I came up with a new strategy. I would record an entire album of originals, release it to promote the group, and then just have them play endless performances at venues that had small upfront costs while I keep the ticket prices low. Once I start to see an increase in ticket sales, I'll consider booking better venues and raise the cost of admission. For the album, which is lovingly called Clean Up on Aisle 99, my friend Ryan and I put a few hours into genuinely making two songs that we approved of, and then for the remainder of the tracks, I just threw together nonsense to use as fillers, just like the real thing. Bass, bass, bass. Bass, bass, bass. Bass, bass, bass. Oh, yeah. Baby, baby. Uh -huh. Wow, Big K is just so much better and more talented than Walmart. That last group of blowhards and morons almost made me go broke. I tell you, there wasn't an ounce of talent among the lot. Jamie was there, he could tell you all about it later. What? So, uh, when are we getting paid for this? This one's got moxie, I love it. Great attitude, Tiger. Gotta watch out for JoJo. <laughs> <clears throat> yes, Stevie G? How come my name has to be Stevie G? Can't I just go by Stevie, seeing as I'm the only Stevie in the band? No. Oh, okay. Well, that's enough chit-chatting. Get some rest, because we got a big show tomorrow. And the day after that, 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 and the day after that. All right, gather round, gang. I've got some good news. Are we finally getting a few days off? You've been working us to the bone. Did you even read my email? Ah, mm-hmm, yes. I see. Interesting. You have quite a way with words. So anyway, I'm proud to announce that, due to the success of our hit song, Blue Light Special, which has climbed to number 26 on the charts, we have been invited to perform on the world-famous Australia's Chart Show. More like Australia's Chart Show. Shut up! Who said that? Huh? Lizzie, was that you again? No. We'll get your butts in gear, you lazy bones. We're all gonna be smiling bright and cheery on the boob tube on Wednesday, January 30th. Um... M Mr. P, are, are we finally going to get to perform for a real-life audience? And, you know, instead of the darkness? Yes. Whatever gets you to stop talking to me. Yes! I'll just go ahead and spoil it for you by saying that my new strategy didn't work either. No matter what I did, I wasn't able to find a sweet spot in profits over expenditures. The game fact that exists for this, which was written by a true hero, Dan2000, back in late 2002, has a few suggestions here and there on apparent strategies to success. All of them actually require a surprising degree of dedication, and you have to be in this for the long haul if you want to win. That being said, I have to ask, who was this game meant to be marketed towards? It's cheaply thrown together, but it has the essence of a deeper simulation. It has the subject matter, art style, and color scheme of something that would have been tailored towards preteen girls at the time, but ultimately the core game is something that might appeal more to an adult. I just don't see a 12-year-old with Backstreet Boys posters on their wall really getting excited about making yearly financial plans and marketing strategies. So who was this for? <sighs> Alright twerps, no sitting around, we got a plane to catch. Hop to it! We gotta get the hell out of Australia! Um, excuse me? Uh, Mr. Platinum? Did you read my latest email? Jeez, again with the email. No, I didn't read it. I never read it unless you specifically ask me to. Ugh. Decided to quit? C 
see you at the top of the charts. What the? Bye. Great. Just great. Anybody else have an email they want me to read? Actually, um, I think I'm going to go with JoJo. Me too. Me three. Ah. Well, Jamie, looks like it's just you and me, kiddo. So, so, what now? Well, Jamie, I got big plans for you, kid. Big plans. Ha 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 C come on, baby. Pop star maker, aka 100% star, aka newcomer be a pop star, is a confusing entry in the PlayStation library. While I don't particularly like or recommend it, I would be lying if I said that I didn't have any fun with it at all. Goofing off with friends while playing with the music editor was actually pretty enjoyable. I'll honestly say that you could squeeze a few hours of entertainment out of that, though yes, there are much better examples of in-game music editors out there. Additionally, if you really want to, and I'm interested to see this, Perhaps forming a successful strategy and seeing it play out well could offer some enjoyment, but I'm not really sure about that. Either way, I'm, I'm glad I can say that I went through this. Uh, it's peculiar and thrown together, but... I, yeah, uh. I want to thank my BFF Alex for co-writing this episode with me and doing many of the voices, including Mr. Platinum. If you want to call Alex and thank him yourself, here's a number you can dial to do just that. I also want to thank my wonderful Patreon pals for the faith and generosity which help this channel to live and grow. If you like exclusive content and want to be a part of this whole project, please consider checking out the Blue Bidget Game Patreon. Thank you everyone, be nice to people, bye.